hear me? Fantastic. We can hear you. Oh, wow. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Now you can hear me, but um, obviously I prepare, prepare the, the video, but uh, I think... Um, I think we can skip the video and I'll just I'll just tell you what I would have said in the video um, that um, what I invited you here for is a participatory system mapping exercise and um, uh, system mapping is, is something that um, uh, uh, that's a good tool to to see how we think of of a, of a system and in this case um, I'd like us to think of um, how we think of degrowth in terms of strategies, in terms of policy interventions. And um, what we uh, need to identify, I have identified uh, factors, different factors uh, that I believe, um, uh, based on my previous research where, uh, uh, where we did participatory system mapping, um, I picked 30 factors that I believe uh, uh, would make a change to the world um, towards uh, degrowth. And, um, and what I would like you to do is, uh, um, is to, to have a look at these factors and, and start to identify uh, how they influence each other and have a chat about, um, about what uh, what may or may not influence uh, degrowth and how. Um, and um, and I think I'm going to, can you still hear me? <laughs> I'm a bit worried that if I share yes. my screen yes, again, we can, we can hear you. If I share my screen again, my voice will go, <laughs> but <laughs> let's, let's try um, because I would like you uh, I would like to show you actually um, a system map. I'll um, I'll pick another one. Just to show you what a system map looks like which I would have done in the video properly. Uh, can you see this now? Uh, I think, yeah, we're about to see what you're sharing. Yes, we can see a yeah. Yes, so this is this is what a system map looks like. This is actually a, a system map of um, of a cosmolocalization um, um, startup uh, that we created. But we've had in um, in uh, Hungary, we've had research uh, uh, where we we did quite a few of uh, of these um, uh, these system maps. And now I'm going to uh, to show you. Uh, this is in the one I want. Okay, so these are the the factors that I um, I brought you today. What I believe affects degrowth, and what I would like you to do now is every each one of you could tell me. Uh, which one you like the most or what you work with this is also like a warm-up exercise and then tell tell me if you what you think this this thing like okay conviviality what what does conviviality influence uh why is it important to degrowth to um uh, to increase yes Yes, we're still seeing the um, the first Not the one map that you. Showed. Oh, okay. So now I have to stop sharing, and then start sharing something else. Okay. Is that working? It's coming. 
ecological and social innovation? Yes, that's right. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so you see you see 30 factors here. Um, and um, I would like each one of you to uh, to say which one um, you work with or which one you you aim at when when you think of, of degrowth and and pick one other uh, that you think that influences. So, for example, if you have conviviality, you think it's important uh, to strengthen community spirit to come up with conviviality because it will lead to, um, for example, um, um, maybe active citizenship. You, you see, you understand what what I'd like you to do? I'm also I'm also Alexandra asking them asking them to do that on the chat so it's less messy with the microphones everywhere. So you if okay. you can the chat, I guess that everyone could put the uh, the the you know the text so you can you can look at the responses there. Okay. Okay. So. Uh... So we have Lisa, for example. Yes. Uh, can we give the word to Lisa? Uh, yes, Lisa, I think you can unmute yourself. Lisa? <laughs> okay. Well, she, she is unmuted, but we cannot hear her. Yes, yeah, she's trying. She says she's trying. Now, this is going to be a difficult workshop if we don't have the dialogue. Okay, now it seems that I am taking all the hello? money. Well, Lisa. Yes, hello. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. fantastic. Yes. <laughs> okay, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, hello everyone. This is really uh, So, I've been I've been doing research on well-being. Uh we've just launched a study with people's local people's responses to COVID and we have a questionnaire that we've put out and we're we're really focusing on our community and trying to um reach out to a, a diverse group of people. We already have connections with the local Latino groups, the local um, NAACP, the National Association for Colored People. And we're trying to get broad representation to see how um, the uh, situation is affecting people differently. And we're really looking towards change. And we're looking towards how can people's stories lead to both envisioning a better life Maybe some of these changes we're talking about that crisis can bring about new ways of conceptualizing the good life, for example, as well as changes that um, make it more possible to meet basic needs in an equitable manner. Thank you. So, as you can see on the on the um, on the system map, I've already uh, put what um, what Lisa was saying. And what I would like to do now is to to go on with this exercise and um, and see what what comes uh, uh, at the end. So, Carol, uh, can we give the word? Thank you, thank you, Lisa. Um, can you give the word to Carol because she says shared access ownership to market uh, uh, and impacts market concentration. You all folks have the power of unmuting and muting your microphone now, so you feel free to to go. Oh, she says she's not feeling confident to speak. Okay, okay, that's that's perfectly okay. So I'm just going to uh, I'm still going to to do what she said. So it it impacts uh, market um, market concentration wherever that is. Uh, yes, it's here. Uh, so it's 
So anybody else who's who's happy to speak up? And obviously shared access ownership will reduce uh, market concentration. So that's a negative. Uh, so they don't move together, they, they move uh, um, in the opposite direction. So who else? Uh, just uh, please speak up if you want. Diego. Hi, yes. Um, Hi. I'm currently uh, working in some workshops that are trying to bring awareness uh, in the environmental uh, situation mm -hmm. um, through looking into the future. Uh, and so people get aware of their current situation and why they need to act now. So it's also a little bit of the active citizenship. Um, and um, and currently working a lot with the Extinction Rebellion. So both uh, that and um, in close contact with uh, many uh, permaculture farms. But that's not what I personally do. So what do you what do you say? You say that um active citizenship increases environmental consciousness maybe the other way around i or environmental consciousness uh-huh maybe they feed each other up but yeah okay anything else you would like to add uh, or, no that would be it. thank you so who else no, we have uh, someone, uh, Sashiko. Can Sashiko? you be careful? Hello. Um, yeah, thanks for this. This looks interesting. So I'm, so you just want two factors that's related. Well, you can say as many as you want because really? uh, this will make you <laughs> <up> the map. <laughs> All right, let's see. So I was thinking about how, um, so what I'm working with is looking at people who move from the city to the countryside, which I don't really see. Do you think there's any you factor? Can add. You, you can add a factor if you okay. want. Okay, that could be interesting if we could add something like um, urban to rural migration. Um, and then, um, how that, I mean, I'm just going to simplify how that would reduce the material consumption mm -hmm. and then increase the individual well being. But also, uh, lots of these people are interested in developing communities. So that would be the community spirit one. I think so there's going to be a lot more to connect with, but maybe I should just shut up for now. Okay, so urban rural migration uh, decreases material consumption mm -hmm. through individual, no, it leads to individual well being. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. Mm -hmm. And through individual well being, it decreases material consumption. Is that right? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And then that, the other thing was the community spirit. I'm going to delete that. And community spirit, which is here. Okay. Uh, yes, I guess it's a plus. Yes. Thank you. Because they move together. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Um, Anybody else? Santiago, can you can you help me with the? Uh, yeah. we, we have Daniel. We have Daniel who wants to uh, uh, talk as well. So go on, Daniel. Unmute yourself and, and participate. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks for this interesting workshop. I would say that the quality of public services can influence the level of material consumption, but I would say it could work in either way. When you have like high quality public transport, I could imagine that it decreases material consumption because less people need to own a car. The other increase material consumption because when you have a good infrastructure or a high level of social services, this could actually give people more income to then spend on goods and services. So I wonder how you would treat something 
that has like an ambiguous effect. Thank you. Uh huh. Well, uh, if we say we have high level of public services, um, the higher the level, uh, the less material consumption we have because we probably share resources. Is that is that what you th what you thought or how you thought? Because then it has um, then it influences material consumption through the sharing of resources. Was was yes. this mm -hmm. was this maybe what what you? Yeah, this would be the first part of what I said. Yeah, exactly. Because, for example, by sharing transport infrastructure with a good public transport network, for instance, then we would share ownership of certain goods, and this would reduce the overall material consumption or could could be a factor. But at the same time, I think it could increase material consumption if you have um, more uh, more possibilities to spend money to consume, to, to engage uh -huh. because of a good quality public services. Okay, so basically what you're talking about is um, is uh, the, um, what's the name? Um, the effect of, of what you spend the money that you you have on, like uh, what you substitute it with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a way. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes. Um... So I, I have a couple of comments here from yes? from the public here. Uh, yes. One one come is a question, and I think it would be interesting because uh, it's from Kelly, and she says, "Could we discuss what we mean by environmental consciousness?" That might kind of clear up that concept for hair and other people in the room. Uh huh. Yes, I think it's um um obviously it's a lo it's a long um, uh, long debate if we go into it. But what I uh, thought by uh, environmental consciousness was um uh was uh, well some call it green citizenship, some call it um um well uh green consumption or eco consumption but like uh, the willingness of people to uh uh to somehow build into their lives into their way of thinking um the uh the well-being of uh, of the ecological system as well i think that's uh that's a short definition of what i thought by environmental consciousness Good, thank you. Now I'm going to add a couple of comments from people that uh, I think they don't feel comfortable talking okay. on, the, on the relationships here. So um, we have, for example, Steve uh, Ehrenberger. He is linking active citizenship with participative democracy. Uh -huh. um, so I don't know how we how you do that. Uh, there yeah. is another. Comment because here. the more the more active the citizens, the more uh, the more participative the democracy can be. Or is it the other way around? Maybe um, he's willing. Yeah. Hi. I, 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 hey. Um, I meant it the way you put it the first round. More active citizen citizenship might lead to more participative democracy. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We we have a request for a live comment from Clara. Clara, can you unmute yourself and participate, please? Uh, I think so, if you can hear me now. Fantastic. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I thought that um, was here. Uh, uh, that community spirit can lead to more social and environmental responsibility of economic actors, mm -hmm. uh, because if you feel that what you do will affect uh, a community and people you care for, uh, then you probably also want to uh, take better care of this uh, community. And uh, yeah, and this can also relate to other of these factors, uh, but I, I think I'll, uh, I'll just take this one. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's great. 
So if if you want to, I can give you a couple more of uh, yes, 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 please. Yeah. Okay, so we have a uh, uh, we have a Prithvi who uh, she or he suggests network and co and cooperation linked to open source knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put these away. Um, hello, thank you very much. Um, so I currently work on um, I'm, the work that I'm currently doing is about trying uh, to get um, um, sort of knowledge held by communities regarding housing to be um, shared um, with other communities. So um, it is sort of um, in order to sort of help each other um, improve their their homes in low income uh, housing conditions. Um, so yeah, networking cooperation are leading to uh, greater open source knowledge. And you also identified if I if I listened well, you also identified that open source knowledge leads to um, uh, to well being or. Yeah, in, yeah, it does. Yeah, that is what we are working on. Um, so we have one, one more from um, Carol Costa. Uh, Carol, you can unmute your mic uh, when I when I finish the comment if you want to participate as well. And she is suggesting um, sport engagement towards tools to create community spirit. Hi, um, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. So I'm Carol. Um, I'm I'm from Brazil. Um, well, I'm interested in and in studying how um, active sports engagement, whether training or just cheering for a community team or something like that, could. Um, be used as a tool um, to improve community engagement on other um, issues other than the the team or the the sport itself. So, oh, if I understand well, active sport engagement is uh, is something we need to uh, add to the to this. Yeah, I think so. Um, the idea is that um, we see a lot of um, a, a high, a high um, community connection with, mm -hmm. within the the sports fans, and the idea is that sh can we? Uh, it's actually a hypothesis. Can we use that um, to try and bring and create um, community engagement in social and environmental questions other than the sport itself? So use this 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 fan base um, to community engagement that's the idea mm -hmm. I'm not sure you okay great yeah yeah, yeah. no uh, no i um i i actually do research in in, in sustainable sports so uh oh great uh, yeah <laughs> so i can relate to that a lot um so anybody else on we we anything? have a live comment from clara clara uh running guard i think clara if you want to join us please do Uh, I think I uh, already said what I was uh, thinking about this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. If you uh, if you want to to add anything or even even not add anything from 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 this uh, this side, but say that there are links. That we are missing here and they're important um the idea is that once we have um once we have a lot of links then we will see the the kind of the factors where strategies degrowth strategies should really really um focus on so this is how it, it links it all links into the um the idea of of strategies for for degrowth because um then uh um then we will see uh, uh what affects uh, what the most so um 
anything you're you're you know you'd like to add i think uh i think is going to help this process and 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 will will help help this map uh, so she go she wants to participate yeah, I'm thinking about maybe uh, something that's not on this list is um, something related to work. So uh -huh. concretely, I'm just thinking about work time reduction, yeah. which could lead to um, individual well-being as a plus, and then um, also to... I mean, this is sort of speculative. So you have more free time to engage with the community. So that's another plus for the community spirit. Um, and by reducing your income through work time reduction, you're reducing the material consumption. Mm. And what was the other thing? Yeah, maybe that's that's it for that one. Thanks. Thank we, you. We have a comment from Casey. Can you please uh, unmute yourself? Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, great. So broadly conceived, I'm interested in the relationship between social media and degrowth. And I mm -hmm. think um, social media can encompass open source knowledge. And I think open source knowledge can then lead to uh, increases in ecological and social innovation. Um, just granted, given that uh, people are readily available to use any existing knowledge or information and then to innovate upon them. Um, and I think increases in ecological and social innovation could then uh, lead to better public services, especially mm -hmm. in the digital sphere, potentially. Um, and I guess I'm, I, I don't know if I would necessarily say that social media use, um, I don't know if I would include social media use in the okay. system, um, system app, but, uh, but you get, you, but open source knowledge definitely, um, helps ecological and social innovation. I think it could. Yes. 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 And then that in turn could then, uh, improve public services. Uh huh. Right. Uh, we have Clara who wants to participate. Uh, yes, uh, I was thinking on the matter of work that uh, maybe we should add to the list that uh, change in or like a redefinition of work uh, because that could lead mm -hmm. to that we see work not only as employment but also as, as something that um, like uh, when you engage in uh, uh, your community or uh, well yeah or whatever then that could also be seen as uh, work and the, then, the only thing yeah. is the redefinition cannot move up or down okay i see so uh so we need to find in a system map we need to find something that um uh if we if we influence that here you know that can that can kind of move up and down and then influence other factors. Mm. So um, so we, if you say, uh, um, I don't know, job satisfaction, that's something we can we can we can do or or if you say the inclusion of um, uh, or the diversity of working forms. Um, that's also something that, that that can move up or down. Yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds good. And so, or maybe uh, I'm just wondering which one you you meant by the redefinition, like uh, job satisfaction or uh, or the diversity of uh, of of work. Uh, sorry, I, I was a little distracted here. Could you say that again? So should I say uh, job satisfaction or diversity of work or both? Uh, maybe both then. Okay. Uh, we have another uh, person raising their hands, uh, Janara. Uh, 
Can you can you unmute your uh, Zanara Zanara? I, I I don't know how to pronounce your name. Well, it seems that uh, Mike is not working. Um, there is one intervention here as well from Nadia, and she makes the relation of open source knowledge leading to uh, more transparency and more transparency leading to more public services. Uh, yes, so, great. So Nadia, he, she she says uh, is not more public services, but improved public services. Yes, I think I'm going to um, to say quality of public services, so that because I think that's that's what we meant with the shared ownership as well. So the better the uh, better the quality of the public ser services, the more people use and share. And um, so I think um, you're right. I should have said the uh, quality of, of public services. Uh, we have one comment from, well, the comment from uh, Janara, uh, who cannot unmute the mic, uh, is that individual well-being in certain developing countries is very much dependent on the access to resources and also because mm -hmm. of centralized systems that that access is fluctuating and we need power decentralization and participatory democracy. Mm -hmm. So access to resources leads to to individual well-being. Mm, yeah, and, and yeah. And, and, um, and participative democracy leads to access to resources. Was that the um, no, it, no, it was um, no, and decentralization. Yes, power decentralization. Power decentralization. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, but there was something with participative democracy, wasn't there? Yes, so uh, we need power decentralization and participatory democracy. So okay. two are kind of linked. And and please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just reading the comments, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now we have uh, another comment from Orlan, Orlan and um, says, I said that material consumption, actually mm -hmm. production of material consumption, uh, would have a positive impact on social solidarity. Uh -huh. Yes. So meanwhile, I, I remind you, if you want to participate, you just type the star and I can give you the word. I can open your mic. And if not, well, we can continue just reading comments as well, if the mic doesn't work or um, or you don't want to participate live. <laughs> Is it um, social solidarity that leads to less material consumption or less material consumption leads to more social solidarity? Yeah, so uh, as I understand the comment is that reduction of material consumption would mm -hmm. have a positive, well, okay, yeah, a positive impact on social solidarity. Social solidarity, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And Anything now, else? Yeah, we have a compliment on that, and is Adder who says social solidarity slash okay. social trust would increase critical mass in demand for sustainability. Uh huh.
So KC wants to participate. Go on. Yeah, so to uh, close another loop, I think it could be said that uh, an increased quality public services would then um, increase the fulfillment of basic needs. Uh-huh, yes. <laughs> I'm just going to save before we lose it. Oh, wow. Why do you, do you want to do that? Okay, so anything else? Uh, there, let me see if I'm missing some comments, some of the last comments. So Orlan says, uh, well, the point is already on the map, but conviviality could also lead to improved individual well-being. Uh-huh, yes. And we have uh, a comment from Susan, uh, and she says, self-provisioning for making, uh, or for having a smaller ecological footprint and reducing dependence on the industry, on industry. This kind of, kind of self-efficiency, self, uh, yeah, self-provisioning as she puts it. And, uh, and now Diego, uh, you, can, you can go on. Yes, when you when you wrote localization, um, is that also linked to access to resources? Uh, well, if that's what you think, yes, because um, <laughs> the localization is is or you know some people call it cosmolocalization. It's it's the network of uh, of localized um, or relocalized uh, um, economies. All right. Yeah. Then that's why I went first. The definition. Thank you. Then okay. So, so globalization then uh, leads to autonomy, or what was the order? Um, I was thinking on access to resources or autonomy of uh -huh. power. Yes, all that. But yeah. Yes. And once uh, once Alexandra is done, you can you can go and 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 share your comment with her. Hi, um, I, I think that shared access and shared ownership uh, lead to a reduction of ecological footprint per capita. That's mm -hmm. fair. I think. Uh, no, it's actually the other way around because uh, the more shared ownership we have, the smaller uh, the ecological footprint. Yes. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes, so it's a, it's a negative uh, relationship. We have, a, we have a comment from Orlan saying justice of accessibility in order mm -hmm. to, I know wait, justice of accessibility to resource should mm -hmm. be to access to resources. Is that a, well, that's a question. So does justice for accessibility to resource should then lead to access to resources? Well, I think so. I think so, because the more justice we have, the more people will be able to have access to it. No, I believe uh, I believe that's a fair comment. There you go. So now, uh, Nadia, do you want to participate? I think Najid, the the mic uh, doesn't work. Uh, so uh, Sashiko, you can you can go on. Hello, sorry, can you hear me? Oh, Najid is here. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it went off. Um, yeah, I, I also wrote it in the chat. So maybe like we could change access to resources to equitable access to resources because that it kind of mm -hmm. um, um, highlights that it's, yeah, it's not, yeah, we want an equitable access. And then I was wondering, um, I'm not so sure if I see the connection between material consumption, so less material consumption and more social solidarity. Um, to the thinking, maybe it's more about the mindset, like if you're maybe less kind of material, materialistically minded, um, you value kind of the social solidarity more. So maybe it's more of a... Do you think uh, material like, consumption and the environmental consciousness are the ones that are linked and then they lead to social solidarity? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, because so I would kind of make a jump between kind of more of the aware, yeah, environmental consciousness or like, um, yeah, awareness for um, so it's actually, social solidarity. Yeah, mm. so it's actually environmental consciousness that leads to less material consumption. Uh, sorry, that's a negative one, and then. And it is also environmental consciousness that leads to social solidarity. Mm, yeah, yeah. So the relationship is more there. Mm. I don't remember who wa who was the one who um, who suggested that, but it would be great to know if she agrees with this. That the link is not so direct. Anyway, um. <laughs> uh, so there was uh, Sashiko. I think you wanted to to say yes. Something. Um, so the just a quick question before I do that. Like, was there a reason why you um, divided between material consumption and resource consumption? Um, yes, uh, I think material. Sorry, the material consumption was um, was more uh, uh, individual material consumption, and resource consumption was like a, a global resource consumption. That that I was see. the only thing. Okay, but then uh, we, I guess, we can bring in the resource consumption yeah. there, so that that's connected to material consumption. Yeah, that's right. I like the birds who are chirping behind you. <laughs> Sorry, the window is open. <laughs> um, so the thing that I was thinking was, so the obvious one, material consumption uh, reduction would lead to a reduction in ecological footprint per capita. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other one I was thinking was I, the, the diversity of work leading to more job satisfaction as well. Sorry, what was it? The, the diversity of work? No, oh, okay. yeah. The diversity yes. of work leading to job satisfaction. Um, and then I had a question. Uh, the frugal abundance, that's, uh -huh. what do you mean by that one? Well, frugal abundance is uh, is when we when we have the feeling that we're not um, we're not missing out. We're we're moving uh, on from this concept of um, of scarcity. Mm. So, do I kind uh, of under understand correctly that it's sort of being satisfied with what you have? Yes, yes, and okay. and not not having not having the feeling that everything is too scarce in this world. Okay, so maybe it's we can. Frugal abundance is, is is also like a a social concept. What what we think is you know current economics is is building on scarcity, and frugal abundance is is um is that you know we think we have enough if we share it properly. Yeah, so maybe that could be connected to um, material consumption. Yeah. yeah. 
and individual well-being i guess yes okay i think i'm done No, I think Anne, she wanted to participate. Yes, hello. Uh, I have to, I would like to suggest a couple more links. One is yeah. again from the shared ownership also to conviviality, because often when you share mm -hmm. like rooms for cooking or clothes or whatever, or repairing things like repair cafes, it's opportunity for meeting people and talking together. So um so yes <laughs> um yeah, great. uh and the other one i think i forgot <laughs> okay <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> when it comes back to you you just say <laughs> so we have a we have a comment from uh, orlan before uh, giving the word to daniel um she says so it was a comment from the what you asked who was the person who was talking about that before and she replied yes mm -hmm. i i was thinking in the sense that if people decide to consume less they are going to be willing to share more um uh -huh. and she also says that she's working on the degrowth movement in switzerland and uh, the links with well-being and that's what comes up that people are more, more willing to be united and interdependent uh now daniel you can you can uh, participate Thank you very much. Yeah, I wanted to suggest that eco-efficiency can actually increase resource con consumption or material consumption, which sounds maybe a bit counterintuitive, but I think there's a lot of evidence for the for the rebound effect and that we, when we become more efficient or when our technologies become more efficient, we tend to use them more. So we, if the cars become more eco-efficient, we just drive more or we spend the money that we save on air travel. And so um, there are a lot of um, studies that suggest it's actually a driver of growth when we, when we become more efficient in our technologies. While at the same time, of course, they reduce the uh, the unit uh, consumption of of uh, electricity, for example. But overall, the rebound effect, uh, effects tend to outweigh the efficiency gains. And I think this it's important to consider this, um, especially when we advocate for this uh, eco modernization or eco efficiency pathways. The only thing is, if we put this in the uh, in the system, basically what we're saying is uh, decrease eco-efficiency. And I guess we don't want to say that, do we? That's true, but I think my point is rather that... Um, we should leave it out. We, can, we, cannot, re no, we cannot rely on it as a, as a strategy. Uh -huh. Using so do you believe that eco efficiency should should actually not even be in a in a degrowth map? It should be, but it should always be accompanied by sufficiency strategies, in my opinion. So it cannot be taken on its own and relied upon on its own. I would and. Taking this opportunity, I would like to ask Francois um, if he could explain his argument, because I don't quite get the point, I think. Yeah, by the way, uh, Francois, I think you just joined us. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Uh, you have kind of total control over that. If you can't, please let us know in the comments, and, uh, and then I'll just have to read the comments. <laughs> Meanwhile, I think uh, Nadia and Orlan they are uh, they are collaborating now on the on the chat. That's great. So Nadia, maybe you can you can uh, talk to us a bit of what's this idea that you have with uh, Orlan. Um, yeah, um, I think we're thinking that because because Orlan said that kind of the material consumption is more less material consumption. Um, yeah, kind of makes that people are 
sharing more, have uh, kind of shared ownership, um, which we like we have a link there. Maybe it could be like a link back again. So like shared ownership can make less consumption, but also less consumption, more shared ownership. And then that the shared ownership links to the social solidarity that um, yeah, that people are more uh, yeah willing to unite uh, when they're also sharing their resources. And we have uh, sorry, I, I jumped over you, Diego. You can you can go on. <laughs> yes, no worries. Um, I think then that the equitable access to resources may lead to this frugal abundance, maybe. Uh, Alex, are you are you with us? Oh. <laughs> I, I think I think Alexandra is gone. <laughs> she will be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well. I hope that she's not completely frozen. It happened to me once with a workshop, and then. Yeah, I mean these things are not uh, like completely. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, uh, bulletproof in a way. <laughs> but, but to be using Big Blue Button with this, this amount of people, I have to say this is amazing. <laughs> also, we have uh, so Francois, your your uh, Francois is replying to the the question from Daniel on the on the chat. So he he. He's working on, he's developing ideas about uh, rebound effects and efficiency uh, involves uh, limits. This is the difference between the efficiency of a bicycle and the efficiency of a hypercar. Uh, well, I guess, I guess we'll, we'll just, I mean, if you wanna go on uh, Diego and discuss while we wait for. <laughs> yes, let's for take hours. over. Do your IT because I think that you might have to check with uh, with her uh, wh what happened with her computer or whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's coming back. Uh, da, da. Yes, I'm here. You're there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It said um, connection problem and, and it just threw me out. So, <laughs> but I didn't have connection problems. So anyway, um, but I guess, uh, I guess my screen is not shared. So, um, so I'll do that again. And this is a good question. Meanwhile, you, you set your screen. While I was away. <laughs> yeah, this question is from Susan. She says, in the bigger picture, how do you how do we encourage more people to participate in degrowth? Um, does it need a different name? So that's kind of a, a big question there. Well, uh, that's a very old uh, degrowth uh, debate. <laughs> and there are a lot of degrowthers who would say, no, we don't want to give up this name of being degrowth um and a lot of people say it's well a friend of mine um uh miklos antal he um he actually wrote an article saying that he he believes degrowth is is bad because it's a, it's a it's a it's a bit like don't think of the pink elephant you know that saying um that because growth is in it people start arguing about growth rather than about something else so he agrees with this but if you i guess if you ask yorgos kalis he would say uh no degrowth is is degrowth for a reason because this is what we actually have to talk about so um so yes um we we could um uh, we could chat on that as well <laughs> it's an exciting topic and i, I think uh, a lot of people have very valid opinions on this. So Anne, you wanted to participate before. Can you unmute and participate, please? 
Uh, yeah, maybe I can try to say something. I'm not really sure, of course, what Francois meant with limits and rebound, but I have my own thoughts, which are maybe similar. So because Daniel argued that if you get more efficient, then this is recompensated by uh, enlarged usage of resources because um, well, you save fuel in the car and then you uh, use the saved money to uh, ride on a plane and so on. That's of course, yeah, that's the rebound effect. That's in a growth system. When you save resources, you will spend them somewhere else. So if in addition, you introduce limits on the resource consum consumption, that is the only way where you can really gain from efficiency. So um, without limits on resource consumption, efficiency gains are not useful. So you mm -hmm. need to lead the growth system in order to, uh, so that efficiency gains are useful. And maybe that's what Francois meant with limits, but I'm not sure, but that's, that's my idea on this. So, so basically, what you're saying is that is that we we need a we need a factor between eco efficiency and resource consumption in order not to have this um, um, uh, contradiction. Yes, something like this. Yeah. And 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 can can we think um, anybody or, or even well Francois or or I think it was Daniel who who said that um, what what could it be what could it be this uh, this mitigating factor Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Okay, okay. So, uh, anybody who has a has an idea on 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 what that could be? D Daniel, I think you want to say something. Yeah, I think it would require a abandoning consumerism as a culture. So this culture of buying mm -hmm. everything that we need rather than using or sharing it with others. So rather this. Uh, buying, using, throwing away culture that we have very deeply ingrained in the, in the global north. I think unless we abandon this culture, so the very PR system of production and consumption, no uh, eco efficiency will save us from that. If we just keep buying new stuff, throw it away, um, and the same holds for energy consumption, when, when, we, when we save money, because we have more efficient technologies, we just spend the money on other consumption goods and increase our footprints even more. So I think it's predominantly a cultural change that we have to see. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, because Francois makes this point, also structural change, because if the infrastructure, the social infrastructure, also the physical infrastructure, doesn't allow you to live in a sustainable way because um, for example, there's no public transport to reach doctor's place or to go shopping. You have to use your car. Then also you face kind of structural limits to what you can achieve in, with your personal consumption. So it must be structural and fundamental cultural change, abandoning this consumerist attitude, I think. Okay, so what you're saying is, if I, I put it, because consumerism can be a factor because you can you can Im influence consumerism to go down or, or up um so, but what you're saying is that uh, if consumerism is reduced then uh then eco efficiency so eco efficiency must go together with consumerism no in order to re re reduce resource consumption Yes, I would argue that it needs to be accompanied by a cultural change a con away from the consumer mindset. Yes, oh, but okay. that sums it up, I think. I think I'm going to say eco-efficiency beyond consumerism. Because then 
then it shows what we want to say. Because in that case, it can reduce resource consumption. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, if we if it's accompanied by this delinking, mm -hmm. then I think I would say that definitely ecoefficiency is necessary for achieving transformation towards degrowth, but it's not sufficient as a condition. Only in combination with the cultural and consumer change, consumption changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think there is a comment on the on the chat from Francois uh, who says that um, yeah. all the limits come from the indiv from individual choices. There are limits coming from design. There are limits coming from politics. So we need to be aware of uh, all all these limits from from everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Francois, is is that a is that a new factor that you would like to introduce? He, he puts here after uh, there is after that there is the discussion if limits reduce liberty. Uh, the thing is that we there exist liberating limits uh, like carefree cities leave space for so many other activities in the city. Uh, that's a comment from Francois. Mm -hmm. Okay, I I don't think I can include that in the systems map, but it's a it's an exciting discussion if uh, if if others want to join. Yeah, I think it's more like a comment to right an overall comment rather than some input for the system. Um, yeah. Now, Eli Eli Peredo, uh, he or she says the limits that can help us in this challenge are those. Uh, we can build ourselves with consciousness, self-determination, decolonization, and eco-dependence notions. Uh, and now, uh, Pridvi, you want to make a comment? Please go on. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I think localization um, decreases the length of supply chains, with then, which then decreases uh, resource consumption. Mm-hmm. Yes. And Diego, you, you also are raising your hand. Yeah, I wanted to actually make the link between uh, localization and resource consumption or equi equal equitable access to resources to the resource consumption um, as Kipri uh, just uh, suggested so perfect nothing else <laughs> so I remind you we have uh, left uh, 13 minutes from this session <laughs> so if you want to participate if you want to say something please go on don't be shy participate <laughs> And somebody, somebody said, and I think I, I, I missed the link, um, that localization leads to accessibility of resources. No, what was that? Pridi, I think it was you. Pridi? Yeah. Um, I had said that localization, uh, more localization results in equitable access to resources. Okay. Yeah, OK. So that's yeah. there. What about social equality? Social equality is, is left there. Do we not consider that an important factor? There is a comment from Clara, not, not about social equality. Okay. It's posing a question. Uh, and is community spirit can lead to shared um, or access ownership or is it maybe the other way around that access ownership mm -hmm. generates community spirit? So that's a, an open question. Like, which one goes first? 
normally when such, such questions come up, it shows that we are missing we are missing important factors that kind of link these two together. So um, it's a very good question, and maybe maybe we need to think about what through what. So conviviality or community spirit leads to shared ownership or shared ownership leading to community spirit through what? Maybe that social equality? So, uh, uh, yes, go on. I think, I think, uh, uh, Sashiko, she wants to, she wants to contribute. Sashiko? Yeah, uh, I don't know if uh, the previous comment was done. Oh, oh it's, sorry, I thought you were going to build on that. Uh, yeah, okay, you can wait, so we go back into the previous comment now. <laughs> well, I don't know. I can't really answer the question, to be honest. So it's a question to you. Okay, I was I was going to go into this Clara's comment. Um, so I was thinking maybe, do we already have a, a factor some, with something like, yeah, there is a social trust one. So maybe mm -hmm. um, that's something that can link. Uh-huh, yeah. That um, so, um, I don't know which direction, but it, that can go in between community spirit and the, you need to have a trust in order to have shared ownership that works. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I I see I see what you you're saying there. So community spirit leads to social trust. Mm, yeah and and social trust leads to shared and accessed uh, ownership mm, brilliant yeah and then shared and accessed ownership leads to community spirit so this is what we call a um a self uh, strengthening link so this is uh, this is like a, a positive uh, uh, link between social trust, access to ownership, and community spirit. Because if you uh, if you move one of them, you're moving all of them at the same time. So we have a comment, uh, and uh, it's it's a question from Michelle saying, I think localization would diminish the length of the supply chain, but I see a plus sign there, so a positive relation there. Can yes. someone explain on that? Yes, the plus sign means that they move together. Uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. They move in the opposite direction. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're right. Because the, the more globalized the world is, the shorter the supply chains. So these move uh, in opposition to each other. And, and Clara, you 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 can go on. Uh, I was thinking that uh, social equality can be related to uh, the fulfillment of basic needs, uh, as well as let's see her, uh, maybe uh, justice of accessibility to resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we have a comment from Anne saying uh, the link between conviviality. Well, I'll let you finish there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're doing okay. a bunch of at the same time, and that that uh, graph got really really interesting at this point. Uh, so Anne is saying the link between conviviality and shared ownership goes both ways. It does not mean there is a factor missing. It is a positive feedback loop. Smiley. It is a positive feedback loop. Now it's a positive feedback loop with the social trust because uh, the more conviviality you have, the more social trust you have, the more shared ownership um, you have, and the more shared ownership you have, it will strengthen community spirit. So it is a positive feedback loop. 
absolutely true. And now uh, I can I can put it there, but Leas are uh, um, um, obviously it would take a lot more time to to clean up this uh, <laughs> uh, this map, but it's there. The positive feedback loop is there now. Uh, now we have a comment from Francois who says we need to link uh, tax. Well, Francois, because uh, you, you put a comment later, um, you, you correct me if I'm reading these wrong. We need links between tax rationing and ma to material consumption, but also a new keyword like large scale infrastructures and the monetary <laughs> Time exists with worth time, I suppose, he says. Um, so there you go. Um, Orlando, okay, help me out there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure if if I understand quite well. Can Francois, can you can you put like those two comments in one comment uh, so we can uh, put that on the graph? Thank you. Uh, meanwhile, I, I will read what uh, Holland says, she or he says, uh, I'd also say that social equality leads to improved well-being. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's one more relation there. And um, yeah, so the more social equity, the more acceptation and the, in that way we improve uh, well-being. Okay, well, um, if there's nothing more, um, then uh, you can see that you know which which are the 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 kind of the very important ones, individual well-being, uh, and it seems a lot of a lot of things we talk about is because we want to increase individual well-being because. We believe that if we increase individual well-being, that's the best factor to decrease material consumption, and uh, and that will lead to uh, to to, to uh, uh, smaller ecological footprints. So um, uh, there's there's a, there's a good reason why everything seems to uh, lead to individual well-being. And uh, and also this uh, this system map shows us quite well uh, why we believe community spirit is is also a crucial one because you know it's it's become a hub a hub of things um, and um, and yes another one that that seems to be important is uh, equitable access to resources. Um, anything else you would like to what what anything that that you believe um is is interesting on this uh, on this system map or what you gained through this exercise? Uh, Anybody? Yeah, it's more of a question that I have. I've worked with system mapping and system dynamics before. And I was always wondering how you deal with um, factors that have a, like an ambiguous effect that can both positively and negatively influence another factor, and where it's not clear what will what will be the net effect. So how would you treat something like this in in this kind of exercise? Thank you. I I would I would either use two different factors. Um, so not 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 say if if it has an ambu ambiguous um, uh, meaning, then I I would start using like uh, the way we said eco efficiency, and then we said okay, but well that's that, that's not necessarily good. So then we added eco efficiency beyond consumerism. So that's 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 a bit more clear what what we mean by that, and um. um 
I think that's that's one way of uh, that's one way of treating it is is making it uh, more um, like splitting it into different factors. Well, Alexandra, we have two minutes to go, and okay. uh, if you want to do like some final remarks, then that would be perfect. Well, I, I I'd love to just uh, I I get back uh, if I can. Um, I get back the screen so that maybe you can see me. Can you see me? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, so I'm I'm really uh, I'm really sorry about the the technical issues, but I really hope that um, well I gained I gained, I gained a lot, I gained of, insight, a lot of insight. Um, from listening to you and from from doing this exercise i hope you did too um and um i am going to uh to share this uh uh this system map with you so that you can you can go on and and and, and think about it if it if it gave you um if it gave you ideas and and thoughts and um i really hope it um it did so thank you very much for participating and um um i'm i'm sorry that we <laughs> we had some technical issues but i i hope that didn't ruin the um the experience so um I thank think, you all i think by the comments and, sandra everyone is very happy and they are thanking you a lot on the public chat <laughs> and i i would i would like to thank santiago for being a fantastic moderator <laughs> So uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. And Just um, one, see one, you in the in the yeah, Discord. Sorry. Go go on, go on. So see you in the Discord, and we can chat yes. there. Yes, exactly. So we can continue this chat on Discord. I put the link on this conversation. Uh, so let's uh, take advantage of that tool and uh, and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Alexander. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.